Hi, my name is Tanushri and I'm a Senior Technical Marketing Engineer at Palo Alto Networks. In this video, I'm going to walk you through some of the UI enhancements made to Prisma SD-WAN that will be introduced in the upcoming release. More information on features introduced, in addition to the unified management capabilities, can be found on the Prisma SD-WAN docs portal. Here, under Preview of New Features, you'll find a brief description of some of the critical features and enhancements that are part of this release. For instance, use of Unified App ID across the SASE portfolio, support for IPv6, using the ION3000 as a data center device for smaller deployments, and many more. Now, let's explore the changes in navigation on the Prisma SD-WAN UI. The first thing you'll notice is the menu options have moved from the top panel to the left panel to align with the rest of the Prisma portfolio. Let's review how the config options under the name dropdown have been reorganized. User Profile can now be accessed on the side panel under the User icon. User Administration, however, has been renamed to User Management and is available on the Systems menu under User Access in the Access Management section. Here, you can also define custom roles. Now let's see how the System Administration menu has been reorganized. Most of the menu options under System Administration, like the ones highlighted, are available under System on the left panel. Access-related configurations have been grouped together and are available under Access Management. For instance, Device Toolkit User Management and Device Offline Access Policy are now available under Device Access. Whereas, IP Access Restrictions, OT Token, and SAML Configuration are available under the Site Access in the Access tab to summarize, all system administration related configurations can be found under the system tab under their logical grouping. Notifications and documentation are renamed to announcements and help documents and can be retrieved by clicking on the question mark icon. And finally, to log out of the dashboard, go to the user icon and click on the sign out or use the MSP portal option to go back to the parent portal. Let's review the reorg of some of the top panel menus. The dashboard is now accessible via the monitor option on the left panel under the summary. Let me load the existing dashboard for comparison. We continue to have two tabs, one that provides a tenant level summary on device connectivity, events, status on the sites enabled with ADEM, and another for link quality metrics. If you pay close attention, we've introduced additional widgets. One, specifically for utilization of top applications. These are aggregated at the tenant level and provide details into the ingress and egress consumption volume and the changes in consumption trends. If there are any circuit insights across any of the sites from the past week, they can now be viewed on the main dashboard under Network Insights. All the other widgets continue to provide the same useful tenant level summary on the health of the network. The link quality dashboard, which can be accessed on the tab next to the summary dashboard, provides a tenant level summary on the link characteristics such as jitter, packet loss, and latency, making it easy to identify poor performing links across the tenant. The deployment topology can be accessed via the monitor menu under sites. Here, if you click on the map view, it will load the topology view we are used to seeing. The options to update the topology view based on site connectivity and alarm status can be found at the same spot. Any feedback can be provided by clicking on the link indicated here on the map. This new site health dashboard provides insight into device connectivity, alarm, health score, with the option to study historical behavior across sites. Site configuration can now be done under the Manage Site tab under Sites in the Setup section. Unlike the previous workflow of creating a site from the map, you can now use the Add Site button on the Site List menu to create a new site. Device Management and Configuration is also done under the Manage tab under Devices in the Setup section. We will have the same layout for claimed and unclaimed devices 
with the same set of operations for management available as before. All Prisma SD-WAN policies such as network security and event policies can now be managed under policies in the Manage tab. The Stack Policies section has all the options needed to manage the stack. Policy constructs such as network context, application, DC groups, prefix filters, security zones can now be found under resources under manage. There's a separate section for configuration profiles that hosts profiles for features like IP fix, APN, DNS, etc. Now, let's quickly review the application tab. Prisma SD-WAN now supports PanOS app IDs and is able to provide enhanced application detection services. As a result of this, the application signatures that we identify has shot up to about 1300. The activity charts can be found under monitor along with other dashboard metrics. If you've subscribed to the Van Clarity reports, they can also be viewed under reports section in the monitor tab. Cloudblades have their own panel where all the pertinent operations on the Cloudblades can be performed. And finally, the event side panel has now been converted to a full screen experience, retaining all the functionality and menu operations as before. I hope you're now familiar with the new and intuitive way to navigate around the Prisma SD-WAN dashboard. Thanks for watching.